Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Satoshi Club video. Now, what are NFTs? You may have been wondering this for a lot of time. I'm not only going to explain it for the beginners, I'm going to show you where you can track the best NFTs, where you can track whales for NFTs, different types of NFTs on different networks, the best NFTs in the world, and a few tips and tricks along the way. So if you do enjoy it, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and let's just get into it, right? Non-fungible tokens. We all know that crypto is fungible, which means you can exchange one coin for another and they're completely the same, but you can't do the same thing with NFTs. Why? Because they have unique identification codes and metadata that distinguish one from another. So never can you have an NFT that is exactly the same as another one. That's the main benefit of them. And that is the reason why we can have NFTs uh, used in a lot of different types of use cases in the world in the future. So it's not only going to be JPEGs and profile pictures and all of this jazz, it's going to be, you know, real estate, uh, lawyers drawing up contracts and basically uh, making a digital sort of ownership record that is stored on the blockchain, which is immutable, as you know, from my blockchain video, which you can check out right here. So key takeaways from what exactly NFTs are. Well, they're cryptographic tokens that exist on a blockchain and they cannot be replicated. Very important to know. Artwork, real estate and other types of real world tangible items can be represented through NFTs. When you tokenize an asset or one of these tangible assets, it makes buying, selling and trading them more efficient, less likely with fraud and generally just better. Right. Next day of trading faster, it makes you avoid a lot of paperwork. It makes you uh, just have a more streamlined process right so efficiency on the blockchain is key now also they can function to represent individuals identities property rights and a lot more which i'm sure will expand quite crazily into the future so i can't wait to see what's going to happen with nfts you know five years from now because currently even though we've seen a movement towards the upside in sales of nfts and then it all dropped down because of the bear market i think that nfts are in a position where crypto was back in 2013 or so and it's just starting to develop right because back in 2013 crypto itself was a little bit you know people thought you know pump and dump they thought it was a scam they're saying it's a fraud all of this and what do you know crypto evolved into something a lot more useful for the future right you have uh, a lot of different you know these proof of humanity protocols for example that we talked about in a previous video you can check it out or uh, just a lot of different stuff that is making everyday efficiencies or everyday things around the world more efficient, right? Using the blockchain. So it's not only a currency, it is there to, uh, you know, allow you to build upon it, to make a network, to make a game, to make a lot of these different changes in the world. And I imagine NFTs doing the same thing in the future. So this ERC721 defines the minimum interface, uh, which was uh, built on the ERC20 or Ethereum smart contract. And then it later evolved into the ERC-1155 standard tokens, which are there for NFTs because you know, transaction and storage costs for these NFTs are a lot lower than in general. Now, uh, they do have potential to represent physical assets like real estate, artwork, contracts, and whatever you can think of, right? Even, uh, you know, old cars, watches, luxury brands, uh, Gucci bags, anything can be represented with an NFT. Also, NFTs can work to remove intermediaries and connect artists with their audiences or for identity management. So a lot of different stuff can be done, but currently it's mostly used for digital artwork, sport cards, rarities, and, you know, one of the most expensive NFTs in the world. Well, there is, you know, a lot more expensive ones, but the NFT version of the first ever tweet sold for more than 2.9 uh, million dollars you can check it right here it's jack saying just setting up my twitter and this is actually an, an nft and it was sold for 2.9 million dollars now next to this what i wanted to tell you is obviously OpenSea is the largest nft marketplace out there and with the largest nft marketplace out there comes the best nfts in the world so this is azuki right here which is one of the most popular nfts in the world with a floor price of around 11 to 12 ethereum and you know it's quite a nice collection it is not as large of a volume as you know mutant apes have or these art blocks have as well but as you can see the top 10 nfts in the entire world are right here and some of them are increasing in volume right such as the cool cats but some of them are decreasing in volume such as you know mutant ape Af yacht club which is stuff that you need to uh, look into if you want to trade nfts on a daily basis now 
I don't know what your goal is with NFTs, but if you want to day trade, then comment down below with uh, what exactly you want to do. And I can make you a little tips video on how to uh, be a better day trader when it comes to NFT collectibles, right? Now, next to uh, OpenSea, which specifically has Ethereum based NFTs, you can head on over to JPEG store, right? Put your dark mode on because that's what I like the most and check out Cardano based NFTs that are performing well in the 24 last 24 hours or in general any Cardano based NFT because the benefit of some other networks when it comes to NFTs are lower entry barriers such as you know having to pay only 20 to 30 dollars for an NFT rather than 2 to 300 for an Ethereum based one lower gas fees so quicker transactions and generally an ecosystem that is there with uh, you know a little bit uh, less volume than Ethereum, so you have more likelihood if you create your own project, for example, to get blasted into the stratosphere because it is a lower volume type of uh, stock. It's like penny stocks compared to, uh, well, not may maybe not blue chip. Yeah, OpenSea would be blue chip stock, and uh, JPEG Store would be you know the mid tier, let's say something like that. But lastly, I wanted to show you NFT Go. Uh, it's an NFT analytics platform. You have whale research and you can check their activity, for example, which is probably the most interesting thing from my side. Basically, you can see exactly what whales are doing, how much they're purchasing, how many whales are active and, you know, what they're doing. Right. And then if you see a whale that purchases a bored ape or sells 10 bored apes or something, then you can say, OK, well, something's going to happen. Let me react to this information. And lastly, you have nftraritysniper.com where you're able to check out new drops coming out every single day. So I guess this is a little hack for you all. So thanks for watching another video. I really hope to see you guys in the next one. And lastly, I'm not a financial advisor and you should do your own due diligence before investing into anything in the crypto or NFT world. And I'm just going to end it right here and I hope to see you all in the next video. Drop a like.